Blast from the past, bottling cherry chocolate beans. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Studying Brews. Uh, and today, like we, like I said, we are going to be bottling the cherry chocolate meat. Now, when I say blast from the past, it's because this was racked, racked, yes, racked into conditioning, also known as secondary fermentation. On February 27th of 2019, today is March 5th of 2020. I don't actually have the date written on here of when we started this, okay? But I know it was at least a month or two before that. So this one has been sitting for quite some time, and that's the idea. I didn't shake it. I didn't start. I didn't do anything. It sat under my desk and collected some cat hair, which I just pulled off, for the last year. How is it now? Now, oh, something else of note. This is the second bottle. If you go back and watch those videos, which I suggest you do if you haven't seen them, we had two batches, basically. One of them got vanilla, and those are aging in bottles, which we should probably do a tasting on those soon. This one, we just left it. We racked it and sat it in the corner. It was like the redheaded stepchild or something. Basically, it got forgotten. I didn't forget about it. I knew it was there. I just didn't know what to do with it. So. Today we're going to bottle it, we're going to take a little tiny taste, make sure it's really done, I'm sure it's done, but I want to take a reading on it to make sure, and uh, we're going to put it in some bottles. So, to get started, we're going to put this on some elevation. I'm going to remove its airlock, carefully. It's like opening up an ancient Egyptian tomb. Ooh. Now, this one finished at 1.002. It's very close to dry. It's also 16.25% ABV. Wow. So what we're going to do is we're going to rack it into a pitcher first. We do have a small amount here, so it's only about 3 liters. I'm going to be very careful with it. I'll put that in there. We do have a pretty good sediment layer, too, so we want to be careful as we're doing this. I'll do it. does have a pretty nice looking color. I don't get chocolate in the smell, which is interesting. I get a lot of the uh, cherry though, most definitely. Now, if you remember, this was made from table tree juice, and I'm so sorry I forgot the name of the honey. It's... Um, Montana's Best? Yes. I think. There'll be links to both of those in the description. Um, they're both... I hate to say it, they're pretty pricey stuff. So, but they're both award winning. So yeah, they're they're like the best in the world and in their categories by a couple of different competitions they were in. Good stuff. I mean that that's pretty awesome to be able to make a meat using these ingredients. It was really really cool. Okay, so as always, when we do a racking, you see that stuff at the bottom there. Most of that is sediment. There's a little bit of liquid in there. I was I was even considering pouring that out and letting it precipitate out. But I really don't think we're going to get much more, like maybe half a cup. It just uh, a lot of effort for not a lot of return in that case. So we're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is take a final reading and just a little bit of a quick taste. Um, there will be an actual tasting video on this one, but uh, we just want to basically find out, do we need to make any adjustments to it? Okay, so we're, we're taking a reading to see where it finished, which we already know it's going to be 1002. If it's not, I'd be shocked. <laughs> it's pretty clear though. That's pretty nice. It, it actually looks very, uh, very jewel-like. Right to the top on the thing too. Finally floated for me though. Oh yeah, that is 1002. It, it hasn't moved. So that's what we expected. That's what we wanted to see. And that's what happened. Let me grab a glass here. I'm just going to pour a little bit in here. And the rest goes right back in, carefully. Okay, so not so carefully. Now, just a quick taste. Smell first. And it's really fruity smelling. I mean, I, I really enjoy the smell. It's got that musky almost scent that yeah. cherry sometimes just does. I want to sweeten this. I, it's okay. It's not, it's not great. For sitting for a year, I would have expected this to have come out a lot better. So, uh, you saw yeah. the face, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very, very, very dry. I mean, 10.02, it's, it's just really dry. It doesn't really have 
off flavors or anything like that. It's just got that very dry thing that we just really don't appreciate. I am going to suck down this last little sip though. And try not to make the face. <laughs> Let me get a scale and we're gonna measure out some. Now, how much honey to add? This, this comes up all the time. It's 35 points of gravity per gallon, okay? Per pound in a gallon of musk. So if this was up to the lip here, that would be a full gallon. I'm guessing it's about two thirds of a gallon. So that means if I put a pound of honey in, it would raise this from 1002 to 1037 if it was up to here. Being that it's down here, two thirds of a pound or like 12 ounces, no, 12 ounces is three quarters. Uh, 11 ounces roughly, about 11 ounces of honey will be the same thing, raising this about 35 points. That's a little much. I think I might go with like half a pound, eight ounces. That should raise it, I'm guessing, somewhere in the 20 to 22 point range, maybe even a little bit more, giving us like a 1025 final reading, that making this nice and sweet. I'm hoping that helps to bring out the chocolate flavors a little bit better from those cacao nibs. They didn't, they seem to have been lost a little bit. Be right back with a scale. Okay, so we got our honey, and I'm gonna add sweet squeeze wildflower honey to this. We do still have some of the other honey. Um, it's just not really convenient right now. And that one, if you remember, solidifies really easily. So it won't pour as easy and it won't mix. We weren't actually expecting to back sweeten this one. So I'm just gonna pour in little, literally half a pound, eight ounces of honey, and go from there. So what you're watching is another reason why we like the two rack rule where I put it into a pitcher. There's no sediment in here or anything like that. So if I need to back sweeten, I can with impunity. And some people will be worried about this. They'll say either I'm adding oxygen, which a minor, minor amount might get in here. Not enough to really worry about. I'm sure there's still a little bit of gas left in this, just enough to ward it off from that. Meat is also very difficult to infect and turn into vinegar. You have to try pretty hard to mess it up. Notice the way he's stirring is that he's moving the liquid more than moving the surface. So that way, keeping the surface tension level, he's not as apt to introduce oxygen into it by the way he's stirring. Right. Another worry that people might have is that I'm going to cause fermentation to happen again because I just put more honey in. Well, here's the thing. I use D47, Lalvin D47 yeast, which has a 14% tolerance. It went to 16.25. The and likelihood of this restarting is... Extraordinarily slim. Yes. I'm going to be putting it into swing top bottles, which if you know anything about swing tops, this is one of the other reasons I like them. They do have a seal on them. Bef usually, before they explode, they will the seals will blow out usually okay some people will say different and they've had and i've seen otherwise but because this is so done <laughs> i cannot foresee this exploding in any way it should not start up a fermentation again in any way so if you are back sweetening on a brew with a different situation where you didn't reach tolerance then you will want to let this sit yeah and take readings and make sure that it doesn't restart fermentation. What she means by that is, basics of alcohol tolerance versus brewing. Our yeast should have gone to 14% and stopped, okay? Yeast don't read the packages, so they don't know these things. Ours went a little higher than that, but the fact that it came out to 10.02 and not below 100 and it hasn't changed in a year means those yeast are done. Now, if this was at 0 0.990, now I have to wonder, is there still some sugar, like, is there still some left for the yeast to work on or not? So that's the thing. This comes with experience too. At 10.02, I know there's still actually some residual sugars in here because of the high alcohol content. If you didn't understand that, we actually do have videos on that that I can link and there'll be cards. But for now, I think this is done. I do want to give it another quick little taste just to make sure that I added enough. If I happen to have added too much, we'll just have to deal with it because that's not something that you can easily fix. <laughs> Pour it off some into a glass. It's going to be slightly cloudy now because we just mixed up a whole bunch of honey in it. Now, I mixed it thoroughly on purpose. That way it will not settle out. So people seem to think that the honey will settle out. Now, it'll stay in solution. 
if it settles out, it means you didn't mix it. So, it smelled exactly the same. <laughs> oh, that's nice now. It's a little sweeter. I, would, I wouldn't even say it's past like a 10-20 sweetness. It's sweeter. That bitter flavor that I was getting is much lessened. Now I think that kind of balances with the sweet. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely an improvement. Do you think it needs more or do you think it's good the way it is? I think... I think it's good the way it is. I um, think with some conditioning, some bottle aging, yeah, I think this will come out really, really nice. Some more. Because I'm still getting that almost burny sensation yeah. on my tongue. Yeah. And There's I a lot of alcohol in the this. Alcohol. Yeah. This needs another year to age out to, to be really, really good. But it needed that extra bit of honey in there. Alrighty. So, next stage. We bottle. When we bottle, we like to use a bottling wand. This goes on the end of the auto siphon, has a little springy thing there that when you when you push it into the bottom of the bottle, like this, the liquid flows. When you pick it up, it stops. I'll show you in a second. Ready? Mm -hmm. I push it down a little bit so that she can get a, a siphon started and then it just flows and I can lift this up and it stops and there we go. If you're wondering why I didn't take another reading, it's because at this point it doesn't actually matter. If we like the flavor of it, we already know the ABV. Knowing what the final gravity of it is at this point, it's called almost immaterial. I am going to use the uh, in my crotch method. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's effective. It works. <laughs> so one of the benefits of bottling day is there's always, or most times, just a little bit left over. So, you know, we get to drink that. Oh, that see, that came out really nice now. I'm very happy that we ended up back sweetening it. Now, you might notice we only got three bottles out of this one. That's because... We did a full batch, split it into two. One of them got oaked, and that is bottled already and put away. Um, this one did not, and like we said, we forgot about it. It was only about three uh, liters in the end. So once I rack that and everything like that, it comes out to three bottles and a little bit of a glass. What am I going to do with these now? I am going to let this stuff age. I think the mellowing with the extra honey will make this quite lovely. I want some of that chocolate to come back. I kind of get it a little bit. Yep. So maybe like six months or a little bit longer, we'll revisit this one and give you guys a, a proper tasting. It's just saying, oh, it tastes good. That's that's about as much as we can say right now because it's not really done yet. And I don't want you to think like, oh, that's the end of it. No, this is not done. This is a continuing saga. So we'll see you again when we're ready for this one. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.